Hi, I'm Joe Carrero. Please tell me I'm not the only one out there who notices that all these retreads in government and corporations are, are always getting appointed to powerful and lucrative positions, no matter how bad they continue to mess up. It's like they all belong to this ancestral elitist club, making sure they take care of each other with the public being damned. And they have been allowed to defame and destroy some of the most respected names in American corporate history. Companies that started with tremendous risk of investment and a, and a good idea and prospered with, with dedication, commitment, and a, and a lot of hard work. I worked for one of those companies, and, and, and that took a, a generation to become the leader in, the, in its field and a decade to fall into oblivion. History will show that the founders of these companies led by example, with integrity, frugality, and just plain good business and common sense, while many who followed intentionally raped and pillaged their way to fortune, leaving their victims to rot while they moved on to greener pastures. The latest one is this character, John Thane, who was was just hired by CIT Group. He used to be the head of Merrill Lynch. Remember the guy who lost $15.4 billion and then gave his favorite employees close to $4 billion in bonuses just a month before it was taken over by the Bank of America? Imagine what their bonuses would have been like had they made a profit. Big business is wonderful, isn't it? Of course, the year before, he got paid $83 million to help pay for a $28 million Park Avenue condo, with Merrill Lynch kicking in another $230,000 for his personal driver to take him back and forth to work. We all need to look into how to get one of these personal driver jobs. Then he spent over $1.2 million to redecorate his office that was already considered well-appointed by any standard, but certainly opulent for a company going in the throes of going broke. Instead of selling off furniture to pay the debts he was incurring, Thane decided to buy a rug for $88,000, a parchment waste can for $1,400, a 19th century credenza for $68,000, and a commode on legs for $35,000, a commode on legs. Not mean to sound crude, but anyone else in charge of a business losing over $15 billion would be crapping in their pants. You know, the real sad thing that I, is, is that I used to work for Merrill Lynch, Pierce, Fenner, and Smith on 70 Pine Street, just, just off of Wall Street. I observed Mr. Pierce, who was a little old man, probably in his middle 90s, who still came to the office carrying his lunch in a, in a paper sack that his wife of over 60 years used to pack for him, because the restaurants around there charged too much, and he didn't want people to think that he was one of these high-flying, highfalutin Wall Street types who could easily spend a couple hundred dollars on lunch. Besides, he told us his wife made a pretty good sandwich. He led by example, showing his employees the value of money was not to impress, but to make more money through investment. I heard the stories of Charles Merrill, you know, the founder of Merrill Lynch, and, and how before the Great Depression of 1929, he advised his customers to get out of the market and pay off their debts since he believed a financial calamity was about to happen. His company lost money on trades, but gained the trust and admiration of investors throughout the world. I remember mentioning where I worked to my Aunt Millie and being told by her with, with tears in her eyes how my grandmother, who brought her little kids over from Italy, used to work as a charwoman for Merrill Lynch at 70 Pine Street, the same building I was working at. She was cleaning offices during the night and how that helped our family survive in this, our country. I made sure I never took for granted or forgot to say good morning to those ladies who, who cleaned those offices and made sure that they knew I appreciated the hard work that they did. Sometimes we forget all the people and their contributions that go into making a business and a country successful. I wonder if John Thane thought about the past contributions that he destroyed or the current employees who were just doing their job, trying to help their family survive, who may now be out of a job without a bonus to pay their bills. He got to step up to another high-paying position that would bring him more wealth while leaving behind the ashes of such a storied institution. Shame on CIT Group for perpetuating such a fraud in hiring him. I also remember how proud my father was of me when I, when I passed my exam to become a stockbroker. I guess he thought our family had come a long way since he got off that ship from Italy and, and I was now one of the elite who understood how 
this country's investments work to make it the greatest financial entity in the world. And I did. But I also have now observed how the greed and corruption of these elitists have essentially destroyed a financial system that was built on the hard work, innovation, and integrity of a generation who contributed to what made our country great. How have these leeches, how have they sucked the blood out of these institutions that the industry giants, giants took a, a generation to build? And now with all their money and influence, they control our political parties and our elected officials who dictate to us how our country is being run. We need to stand up and throw these bums out of their government and corporate positions for the dis disgrace that, that they brought to the memories of, of those contributions and the dedication of all those people for all those years. I cannot believe that the, the pride we as a public have of the successes of our, of our American history would allow us to tolerate another minute of these corporate criminals. And stay alert, folks. I think the worst is yet to come. Thanks for listening to An Average Joe.